Hey everybody, Rabu Gary here with Real Talk with Rabu Gary. Am I excited to be with you guys this evening? And we have an amazing, amazing show ahead of us. But I hope everybody's having a good week. Hope you had a great week. And congratulations to the recipients who won the trips last week. I'm um, very, very excited about for you guys. One person, I cannot find them, so they need to reach out to me. That's very, very, very important. They need to reach out to me because I can't find them, all right? And I want to give them their trip, which is, which is very, very important. So again, I like to say hello to everybody out there. Uh, we're going to have a good show tonight. And um, for those who saw the last episodes, hopefully you went online and you went to YouTube and you made a comment, um, good, bad, or indifferent, because your opinions are important, and you made a comment on the last show, episode 12. Because if you did, towards the ending of this show, what I'm going to do, I'm going to be pulling, um, well, the machine is going to pull some names, and, and your name will get pulled, and hopefully your name will get pulled, and you'll win an all-expense paid trip to the Caribbean for two five-day, four nights. But with that, hey, I'm here to for you guys to have some fun tonight, and uh, let's talk about this week's commentary. This week's commentary is about proud parents, okay? Proud parents, and so, and there'll be other discussions, but this is what I want to talk about. I just came from an award ceremony where, oh my God, you know, I was brought to tears. Um, and, 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 and this is important, parents. Um, the, as much as you can toot your own children's horn, you need to. Okay, because it helps bring their self-esteem up. I'll say something from an African-American perspective, and some people can relate to this. Um, I have a doctor. Her name is Dr. Leary. She wrote the book Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome, and this goes deep. You know, and she would talk about sometimes you would see, and I want you guys to take this home and even get her book. She would talk about how you would see, let's say, an African-American mother and, um, and a Caucasian mother, and they would both be with their children. And the Caucasian mother would be, uh, you know, just excited about Timmy. He's great in sports. He's doing this. He's doing that. And, and this has changed a little bit, a little bit today. But then the African American mother, though she's very proud of her child, also, in the same sentence of saying, "Hey, I'm proud of my daughter. I'm proud of my son," she said, "Well, you should have seen a bad behind last night." And when I heard that, I was like, "Wow!" At one time, while she's just as proud, okay, at the same time she demeaned her child. And she didn't mean to. She loves her child just like the Caucasian um, uh, uh, adult loves their child. But there's a lot of, a lot of um, um, layers of, of, of self-love that needs to be there. So when, when, when that needs to be replaced. And, and when you hear, you know, to all my people out there, you know, I love everybody of all, all nationalities, all loves, all, all, all walks of life. But sometimes when you hear, let's say, an African-American person, they'll see a couple and they'll say black love. Okay. It stems from way back. Okay, the slavery times where there were times where they weren't afforded to love their children or, you know, or their spouses because for, for fear of being taken away, sold and so on and so forth. And it gets deep. And, and, and for those who are hearing me right now, you know, this is not a sad topic. It's a topic to grow on. Okay, so if you're that person in one breath, you can say, hey, I'm so proud about my child. But in the second breath, Okay, and, and again, I was a victim of this. I mean, I was guilty of this. In the second breath, you can say, yeah, but you should have saw what they did yesterday. And it just happens naturally. If you've ever been that person, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of good information out there that can help you tweak that perspective. And so, hey, you know, my topic for tonight, my commentary for tonight was be a proud parent at all costs. And we know kids are kids. Kids are going to be kids. They're going to do something silly every once in a while. But it's important for you to be that proud parent because it does nothing but lift their self-esteem, make them even better, makes them stronger, and makes them a good reflection of you. And that's what we want. Our children, you know, in the words of Dr. Shafali, who wrote the book, The Conscious Parent, our children are a reflection of us. And when we have great kids, that means we're doing great ourselves. And so with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to cut to commercial. And when I come back from commercial, we're going to have our guest speakers on. And I'm elated about the guest speakers that I have on tonight. So let's go ahead and go to commercial. The global market is waiting for a fundamentally new transport and infrastructure technology that is safer, faster, highly efficient, and very eco-friendly. With all-terrain functionality, Skyway is the future of transportation being built today. Skyway believes transport should be a solution, not the source of our problems. Become a co-owner of Skyway and join the effort to build Skyway, save the planet. We invite you to learn more at buildskyway.com. Dorothy Denise, 
the pastor, the prophet, the teacher, the author, the entrepreneur has written an amazing book called The Hidden Affair, the story of a former first lady determined to shatter the silence. Get your copy today at DorothyDenise.com. Fed up with the rising costs of cable and satellite? Cut the cord and start watching the channels you want at a fraction of the cost. With IXQ TV, stream thousands of entertainment, sports, news, and movie networks, plus local channels on your TV or mobile device. For as low as $39 a month, enjoy all the benefits of cable and satellite with no credit checks, contracts, or installation fees. Say goodbye to high cable bills forever. Visit StreamingSaves.com today. Overcome diabetes. Stop making excuses. Resist the hype. Save your life by Marion Hayes. Get your copy today at Amazon.com and overcome diabetes. First impressions can be the difference between gaining loyal customers or losing them forever to your competition. At PrintFrenzy.com, we provide endless possibilities to make great first and lasting impressions. From business cards and banners to design services and website development, Print Frenzy has the high-quality products you need at the lowest prices you'll find. Re-energize your business with a fresh, professional look. Or print your current designs with us and save. Visit PrintFrenzy.com today. Hello, I was looking for a good cleaning service. Can I ask you a couple of questions? Can you clean my garage? Can you steam my carpets? Can you work really fast? Do you provide your own cleaning supplies? Can you work around my schedule? Do you screen your workers? Can you clean my business too? Okay, I don't need my husband anymore. Today's episode of Real Talk with Rabu Gary is brought to you by Glam Haven The Movement. Glam Haven is known for its incredible down to earth environment. Run by Euphrates Robeson, the corrective hairstyling specialist. Now, Euphrates' designs have been featured on the BET Awards. She sat on women's panels, but more importantly, she's been highly recognized for her service in her neighborhood. Euphrates is highly known for her wonderful makeovers, as you can see here. And she's also known for her versatility. So if you're looking for an incredible place to great environment to have your hair done, reach out to Glam Haven The Movement. They can be reached at 973-375-5855. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Oh my God, um, I am so excited tonight to be introducing my guests to you. And I'm going to bring them on right now. They're having a good old time chatting behind the scenes, but I'm going to bring them on and um, introduce them in the order of the, how long I've known them, which is going to be pretty cool. And so they can hear me right now. And so I'm going to go ahead and unmute them while I introduce them. And I'm going to bring them on as well. So ladies, you are live now. And so ladies, for those who are home, y'all can say hi to folks or... Give a good wave. There we go. All right. So, so, so to my viewers out there, I want to introduce these young ladies, and I guess in the order of how long I've known them. And I'll start with my good friend, Tammy Pitt. Uh, Tammy's just, <laughs> hey, I, I've known you the longest. Tammy's just an amazing young lady. Um, um, actually, sh she and my wife were um, childhood best friends, and they're still best friends today. And I remember, you know, when I met Tammy, Tammy's always been in my corner. She's like, Sherry, he's a good one. At least I think so. No, but she has. And uh, she's just an amazing person, um, multi-talented. Um, she'll tell you a little bit about her background in a moment, but she's just a great soul. And then I got a guess between, now I would say Tamika before Myra, um, because Tamika and I, we didn't work together per se, but we were both part of a large business in the past. And Myra was too, but I think I met Tamika prior too. Now Tamika's an entrepreneur, we're over now, a new author. You'll hear a lot. You'll hear a lot about that today. But again, it's just a great person. I've had a chance to follow her on social media. We stay in contact all the time. All the time. But I see the way that 
she's adored, you know, by the folks that she gets a chance to work with. And like Tammy, Tamika's a giver, and um, she's just a great person. And then Myra. You know, Myra and I have been friends for a, a long time. And, you know, not only is Myra a friend, Myra's a mentor. You know, and she doesn't even know it from many aspects. When she talks, I listen. I listen to everybody because I'm a true believer in the words of Emerson. Every man or woman is our superior. So no one's bigger than anybody else. And when someone speaks, you know, um, it's important to listen. And Myra's done so much for so many people. And you'll get a chance to hear her story tonight as well. And like Tammy and Tamika, she's a giver. And um, she's followed by so many people. And I'm just delighted to be, uh, you know, in, in the presence of these young ladies tonight. And so with that, we'll go, we'll start with Tammy. Um, and guys, when I'm looking at you, I'm looking at the camera, but when I'm looking at them, I'm looking at my friends, and you can see them as well. But I'm um, Tammy. Um, Tammy, Tamika, Myra, but I'll start with you, Tammy. Hey, uh, I don't like to read bios because I believe nobody could tell your story better than you. Plus, my viewers get a chance to read your bios during the daytime. Um, but uh, Tammy, could you tell folks a little bit about yourself and um, why you're excited to be on the show tonight? Well, I was first invited by Rob. Um, I remember when this was all manifesting and Sherry's like, my was doing this talk show and we all love Rob because Rob can talk and it's always talking good things and things that you can learn from. Um, but I am from Newark, New Jersey. I am an educator by day. I work for a program which is the first of its kind in New Jersey. It's called NJ Step New Jersey um, uh, Schools Transforming. I, it's a long title, but it, it's in, in, in essence, it's a uh, prison reentry program, and I kind of stumbled upon it after not working for almost 22 months, but I was in higher ed uh, prior to working there um, at Rutgers Newark. I was working at Keene in Union, and I was kind of tired of higher ed, and I'm like, it can be draining because I did academic advising, and I was a program coordinator. So I'm like, okay, God, I love what I do, but it's getting stale. So this came along, and what New Jersey Step is all about is it's a um, it's a program, first of its kind in the United States, a, a degree granting program, and um, all of my students have um, are um, are and have spent um, uh, at least anywhere between two to thirty years in one of the nine state um, prisons, females and males, and they receive most of them received their associates while they were inside. And now they're at Rutgers Newark finishing their uh, bachelor's degree in various majors. My background, extensively, I've always loved fashion. Um, so in the, in, uh, the, during the 22 months when I wasn't working, I started my own um, image consulting business called Bless With The Dime. And the whole platform behind it is that I um, mostly do thrift shopping and sales shopping. I don't ever want to pay full price for anything reference to clothes. I'm just like, if you just don't have to. You can search it down on the internet or what have you. And um, so I post every day on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I, I'm also a blogger. Um, I have a blog called Blessed with the Dime. Dot, um, dot, blessed with the Dime, and it's Blessed with the Dime dot com is the webpage. And you can go there and I talk about lifestyle and fashion topics. I blog every other Wednesday, so twice a month. But ultimately, I would like to marry my world. So um, I have. Uh, a master's in public administration, bachelor's in political science, and I'm headed back to school in September to Seton Hall to do a PhD in higher education, management, policy, and leadership. And I would like to marry my worlds because ultimately I would like to um, become an advocate for higher ed in prison because it does make sense. Because once these, um, you know, this population of people come out, you have to give them something to go on. But I would like to ultimately dress women in reentry programs. So it's about a really good friend of mine named Kenya Tyson, who's a, a expert in higher education and prison reentry and criminal justice reform. She says, Tim, we have to figure out how to marry our world so that we're not over overextending ourselves. So that's just a little bit about me in a nutshell. Cool. Well thank you. And and for those who are listening at home, you know, that that's an interesting background and a needed background. Um, and I think you guys do a great job of marrying the two, especially from the ladies. You know, well, you, you, you can style anybody, not just ladies. And so, but, but thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to roll up to my good friend, Tamika Quinn. And uh, Tamika, uh, you know, folks get a chance to follow you. I know you're an author, and it's exciting to hear that. But uh, tell, tell folks a little bit about yourself and, um, and, 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 and why are you excited to be on the show today? Well, thank you for having me. 
uh, this is a huge opportunity anytime I feel like you get to share what you're doing with the masses, especially if it's good stuff. I am prior Navy. I am a mother of three and a widow. And so I've been a single parent for five years now. And um, it's not easy. However, I feel like God has put on me because I had a stroke at 27. Actually, I had two strokes at 27. That, you know, my mission, my calling is to help people prevent having strokes, prevent having heart attacks. Um, stroke affects one in every three. So you're talking about one out of every three people that you know are going to succumb to a stroke. And the sad thing is that 80% of all strokes are preventable through diet and exercise. And so uh, for us, the, the people who suffer from heart attacks and strokes the most is the African-American community. So my mission is to reach that, that market to prevent stroke, to lower those numbers. So it's not one in three. So that we are not affected drastically different than other ethnicities. Uh, and so, you know, I, my whole entire left side of my body was paralyzed. I had to relearn everything, how to walk, how yeah. to talk. Um, the, the hardest thing I tell people that I've ever learned in my life was how to tie my shoestrings again as an adult. Wow. And so when I think about what stroke did to me and what stroke has done to millions of other people, uh, we need to know that it's preventable. We need to know that teenagers and young folks have strokes too. This is not an old folks disease. Although my father just had a stroke on Friday, you know, it affects everyone. And it's, it's small changes that we can make. I wrote a book with my daughter, well, really for my daughter. She is the one who inspired me. People think, oh, she's on this mission to help people lose weight and help people change their eating habits because she had a stroke. And I always correct them. It's, it wasn't because of what I went through that even pushed me to be on this mission. It was clearly because my daughter was eight years old, severely overweight, and developed high cholesterol to the point that we wow. had to go to a pediatric cardiologist wow. who wanted to put her on statin medications. And I said, the devil is a liar. We're going to do something else. What are the alternatives? And the cardiologist said, the only alternatives are diet and exercise. But most people don't succeed with that. So we really think you should give her the medicine. That was my wake-up call. My baby was not getting on medication at eight years old for cholesterol. So... Our journey was because, or what really was inspired by her, and she's lost 40 pounds. In the process, I've lost more than 80 pounds. We've helped our family change the dynamics of how we eat at family functions, how we eat at home, how we cook, what we eat. And so, you know, this mission for me is so much more than me having a stroke. This mission is about saving my family and creating a legacy that. Oh, when you know that the Quins are coming over uh, for dinner, we can't have fried chicken because they're not going to eat that. Oh, they don't eat red meat. Oh, they don't drink milk. You know, these are the these are the standards that we're setting in our family and and letting the masses know, hey, we can choose to live. My book is called Change Your Mind, Change Your Waistline, mm -hmm. and it goes into detail about the steps you can take to change your life. And so I'm just excited about it. Thank well, you for having me. No, I'm glad that you're on the show. It's interesting, um, you know, being 46 years old now, and, uh, you know, I just started working out again, and, you know, for what it's worth, I coach basketball, and it's so stressful. It's fun, but it's stressful. And, you know, I find my time, myself, every once in a while with a heart palpitation or something here and there, and I'm like, uh, -uh I got to get back in the gym, like, forever. And we've drastically changed our diet and stuff. We'll talk about this later on in the show, but I'm glad you're on here as well. And so... The next person I'm going to introduce um, is my good friend, Myra Burroughs. Again, Myra, tell you a little bit about herself. But Myra's amazing as well. And she, she's going to talk about some, some of her successes and what she's helped other people also as pertains to health. And so, Myra, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself and why you're glad to be here today. So thank you so much for having me um, on Robin with this great panel of strong, powerful women. <laughs> we are, we, I really love that. Um, a little bit about me. I am 62 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and I always say that because nobody believes how old I am. So I love it here. Um, being this age, you get some wisdom. 
Absolutely. It's a great thing to be here. A lot of people say to me, why do you tell people, because women don't like telling the age, why do you tell people your age? Well, you know why? Because 16 years ago, the doctor told me to go home and be with my family. So 16 years ago, I wasn't supposed to be sitting here talking to you right now. I am happy. It is an honor for me to sit here and talk to you right now. So my age, 62, is a blessing for me. I had fourth stage breast cancer that moved to my liver, my lung, and my bones, all incurable. I sit here today free. Wow. No drugs. Amazing. No chemo. Nothing. And wow. good help. Don't take any medicine. And what I love, love doing is helping people realize that they can live. You can live. But there are some things you have to do. I always say, God, heal my body. But guess what? It's up to me to keep it. Hmm. I, have to keep it. I have to do the things that I need to do. I've helped many people now, and I love this. Many, many people call me because lots of people know my story. Um, many people call me and they um, ask me, how did I live? What did I do? Well, I did a number of things, a lot of things. There was no one thing that I did. I did everything. I researched. I started being my own advocate because the doctors are always experimenting. Mm -hmm. And I found that out through illness. Cancer is a journey. It's not a death sentence. It's a journey. But most people, when they get cancer, they don't even die from the cancer. They die because they are afraid. They listen to a doctor, tell them that they have three months to live, two months to live. No man has that right to tell you that. And no man has a right to say how long you're going to be on this earth. You're going to leave here when it's time for you to leave here because we're all going to leave. But you can live longer. You don't have to die from cancer. I truly, truly believe that. But what you need to do is you need to find out what it is. Why is it attacking you? Because I ask those questions. Why is it attacking you? What am I doing? And there were, there were a lot of things that I had done. And eating was a big part of it. And I was, I, I didn't have nutrition. I wasn't drinking water. And I was eating sugar. And so the cancer, I believe, was there, but it wasn't living. So I, I began to, to be my own advocate. And the doctors used to say to me, you think you smart. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know I'm smart. Yeah. And they called me Miracle Woman. Be, all because... I was an advocate for myself, and I learned how to be that. And now I've helped a few people um, to live, actually. They have to eat cancer. So I need to, and, and, and I know people always ask me this, I really need to write a book, but I'm doing a hundred other things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't work a regular, normal job like everybody, and that's because it's very hard once you've had a disease like this. I actually worked for Columbia University for 18 years, 18 wow. HR manager, and um, it, I got fired at the time when I first got <clears throat> diagnosed, but it don't feel bad for me because I, I'm a winner. That's yeah. all I need to say. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I, I, I can't get a job like everybody else. I, I probably could, but it wouldn't pay me what I'm used to getting paid. So therefore, that's how Rob, I met Rob Boo. I had to take a leap of faith and go in another direction and uh, become my own boss. And I figured I could take the same skills that I had learned um, over the years and apply them to having my own business. And I did, I did pretty well. I did pretty good. So um, that's how I, I, I was able to meet Rabu, learned a lot from him, and uh, doing this process of, of reinventing myself. Um, and I haven't had a job in over 10 years, and I drive a luxury car. I never drove one when I had a job. <laughs> <laughs> that's saying something. I'm hmm. very good. Um, 
and uh, that's 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 what's over. Well, thank you, Myra, for sharing that, and and just in your story. Um, like the other two young ladies, you, I'm sure you've inspired someone. And so what I did ask the ladies to do, for those who watch Real Talk, and this is amazing, you know, typically, and I may, you know, this is going to be one night, sponsors will be upset, um, but they may not. I may not even go to another commercial break. I'll be honest with you guys because I'm loving what I'm hearing right now. And um, not that my other guests weren't important because next week I'm going to have some great guests, okay? But these topics are right on point and, and they're very apropos right now, literally. And so what we're going to do, we typically ask some questions or we ask our guest speakers to get our questions together, but we're doing a lot of chatting here in our messenger group. Um, you know, as we get the show together, the guest speakers get a chance, you know, I keep it short. They get about 24 to 48 hours to get a chance to meet each other and come up with some topics and things they're going to talk about. But we've been chatting in here and I can't find your questions. So I'm going to go back to Tammy and I believe Tammy, yours was about fashion if I'm not mistaken, and, and um, if you could take a couple of minutes, you know, uh, two minutes or so to talk about it, and maybe if, you know, Tamika or Myra may have something that they like to expound on your topic of tonight, we'll jump in, but uh, Tammy, typically I would read it, but I just can't find it's a whole bunch of them right here, but if you go ahead and say what your topic was, and um, let's chat about it. Uh, my topic was the, I, the importance um, of image, um, not image management, because I'm not I don't do that. But, you know, as a African American woman who's professional who work in an, in a predominantly Caucasian um, higher ed, as you know, Myra is very not we're like sprinkles in the <laughs> in the in the cotton, so to speak, and I don't know if that's that a good thing, but um, a good scenario. But, you know, um, I always tell my students, particularly my, my young ladies that, you know, um, you know, as women of color we are the most educated, but we're yet the most disrespected, right? So I always make it a point to um, present myself visually well. And I've had the best conversation. Sometimes I've sparked the best conversations over a pair of shoes. And it's, you know, and Robin knows how I am. I love, I've always loved to dress. But I make it a point every morning, even more so now that I, um, I'm i almost like a walking billboard because people's like, are you, I've been places. People are like, are you blessed with a dime? I'm like, oh. Okay. Yeah, it was the scariest thing. One day, I was in the um, I was in the nail salon, and this lady was giving me like this nice smile, and I'm like, and and she said to me, "Are you blessed with a dime?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "Okay," because I'll talk to anybody. I'm definitely Robin's female twin. I'm like, I'm like, mm, did I meet you here? She's like, "No." She said, "I found you on Facebook." She said, "Sister, you're sharp," and I'm like, "Thank you." But the key key for me is that I'm paying seven dollars for suits two dollars for shoes you know and i'm like but i always make it a point to tell the young ladies always present yourself well because we already come in we're black and we're women and if you don't look a certain way i don't care what your uh, resume may read they write you off immediately so if you come in a certain way it's almost like okay you immediately grab their attention visually and now everything follows up it's just like it's like you catch the fish and then you draw them you know you draw them in and um I'm more um, concerned, even more so, about uh, attitude and spirit because it can't be all visual. And then you open your mouth and it's like, oh, that breaks because you don't have, you know, personality. But I just, I know that uh, impression, the first impressions are the most lasting. So I'm gonna give you something to look at when I walk through the door, no, and, that's and right. I'm doing it on purpose, you know. And I'm doing it for two dollars. Right. So you know, like today I had a two on. And I got so many compliments on it, but I literally only go to the thrift store when it's 50% off. And I think I paid $3.50 for the suit. And this is what I tell a lot of the young ladies, particularly at Rutgers, I had done something with your career day. A lot of the young um, Latino women and the young black women, and you know, it's so funny because I really realized 44, I'm approaching 44 this summer, like, yeah, you get there, you in that older bracket. And the young ladies, when I told the guy, the career center, I said, you can give them clothes, but if you don't tell them how to put it together, it's pointless. So when I went to the career center up in the Robeson Center at Rutgers Nord, um, the young lady, a nice shapes, and I'm like, okay, you want a job or you want a man? I said, because what you got to realize is when you walk in, there are creeps everywhere you go. Yeah. But you always present yourself as well. So if you have hips, there's nothing you can do to get rid of them, but you can wear things that can accommodate your body based on its mm. shape. You know, I'm like, you stay away from the curvy thing, and then you maybe do an A-line skirt. Or if you're going to wear something that's curvy, make sure that your top hits right beneath 
your hips and put on a blazer. So there's ways ways that you can do it. But I'm very, very big on presentation because I know the struggles that we have as women just showing up at the door as black women. So if you don't present well, nine times out of ten, you're not going to take you seriously. Because I do have friends who are very well-versed on resume and they have degrees and accolades, but they don't present themselves well. And it can be hindering. And unfortunately, we live in a, a world where people want to think instance. They want things instantaneously. They want to see. They want to know. So if you don't look the part, you know how they say, dress to where you're going. Not where you are. <laughs> so wow. that's what Wow, that's interesting. You know, I once heard a, a good philosopher say, God, look on, God looks on the inside. People look on the outside. That's right, Rebel. That's right. And that's the truth. Well, mm-hmm. well, well I'll roll up to Tamika. Tamika, any... Uh, any comments on that? I think that's so on point. It's so needed. You know, uh, I work with a lot of young people, especially in the public school system. And so I do workshops. I, I didn't mention that I own a spa as well, Pink Carpet Glam Girl. And so we do parties for young girls. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a birthday, a Girl Scout troop, whatever. But I do workshops with young folks um, about leadership, etiquette, self-development, you know, all those good things that seem to be missing in society. And we are wondering why these children are just off the chain, mm-hmm. thinking uh, on a whole different level, doing right. all kinds of things. Absolutely. But my, my program literally gets back to the basics uh, of being a young lady that's respected, respectable. And I talk about those things, too. You are dressed the way you are dressed. That's mm. right. Yes, that is so <laughs> needed. It's so needed. Awesome. Wow! Wow, Myra, any um for for our for our twenty six year old, sixty two year old young lady there with my wisdom, <laughs> any any quick comments on that before we go into the next no, topic? Oh yes, oh yes. So <laughs> I tell you, remember, I was HR, <laughs> and as an African American woman, she uh, Tamika is right. I I stood out like a sore thumb, like it, it was me. I was always able to work myself in there mm-hmm. because um, I could go up and down, learn how to go up and down on those different levels. But when you walk in, they are looking. Yes, right. If you get in, if your name didn't get yes. your your if your name didn't get thrown in the garbage can, that's right. You have all the same credentials. We can both get it. It can be a black person and a white person, and they can have the same credentials, Absolutely. the same education, right. live in the same building. But guess what? If your resume had that name, that would get shoved to the side in the garbage, whatever. Or if you were lucky enough to have a good name, when you came through the door, <laughs> if it was a job for two people, they would hire both of you if, you if you were good enough, but you would not get the same money. Wow. So your appearance means a lot. Yes. Even in the business that we do now, the appearance is everything. She's absolutely right. You have to suit up. I keep telling young people, you have to suit up when you want something. You can't do what everybody else is doing. So you have to look good. You have to look different. That's right. It doesn't matter. You have to look prepared. That's right. You have to look worthy. That's yes. Right. And it's my friend. Right? It mm-hmm. doesn't matter that you you have on a three dollar suit, a two dollar. It's put together. And it's all who's in it. <laughs> I'll share this with you. This just happened yesterday. Okay. My daughter uh, is the same one who we had the weight issue. She's now 20 years old. She's a, a sophomore at Hampton University, nice. Asian in journalism. Okay. She had to do a mock interview uh, with a different professor than who teaches the class for extra credit or something. It wasn't like um, mandatory, but it was going to give her some extra credits in the okay. class. In that course. And so she went to the mock interview. She called me. She was so upset. She said, Mommy, I went to the interview and that professor told me you are not dressed for this mock interview and you will not come in. And she took the next wow. girl. And so I said, What are you talking about? She said, I, what, I'm like, What are you wearing? She said, I have on a dress shirt and a skirt. I don't even know what she's talking about. I said, You don't have on a blazer? 
She said, no, it's hot. <laughs> well, you <laughs> messed that one up. Right. Yeah. That's on you. So she learned that lesson the hard way yesterday and missed those extra credit points. And so I applaud what you're doing. We got to show up like we mean it. Right. And right. you only get one time to yep. trust them, right? That's so it. this is what I tell the young ladies, and I was telling the young ladies at, at Rutgers, I said, okay, so this this summer, my whole um, uh, summer, I'm going to do thrift clubs. So I started this about a month ago. I'm going to different boutiques, thrift stores. Like this weekend, I'll be in Philly, and I'll probably do some lives, and I'll do some taping. Um, I'm also starting a YouTube channel, but I'm like, start building your closet as a freshman or sophomore in college so that when you get to the senior year, you're not scrapping. And I told young ladies, even women my age, if every time you go somewhere, you got to go run to the mall, check your closet, sis. Because mm. there should always be a couple That's of basic right. pieces in there, yeah. a black dress, a black suit. And yep. I'm even going to, um, this young lady told me really some time ago, she said, every time you address someone or an audience, leave them with something. And I've been a little slow. So I'm going to put cards together with like five staple pieces that every woman should have in your closet. Oh, oh, I love it that. Doesn't have, right, it doesn't have to be um, anything of name brand because one thing I'm not is a lady for because my mom is a dresser and she would say to me, Tammy, if you can dress, now I'm going to date myself, lady, you could go to Woolworths and get a dress <laughs> order, right? So my mom would always tell me this, so I've always been keen and stark on because my dad was big on hair. He would make little jokes like it came. And Rabu's sister is my hairstylist. And I've always got my hair done. I've always been big on hair. It's always me. My dad, you come in, and your hair's not done. And my dad would be like, are you in mourning? And he'd be like, what? Like, did your damn hairdresser die? Like, <laughs> and it doesn't matter if it's in grace. It's always neat and presentable, right? So I never forget when I first started working at Rutgers, I had the interview. And I had just spent $125 to get braids. So my girlfriends were like, you're not going to take the braids out. I was like, nah, sis, I'm on a budget. Like, no. I took those braids, and everybody laughs because my ripper says, why do you always get long, long braids? I'm like, I'm a bald-headed girl. If I'm wearing braids, they're going to be long because I need to style them. I took those braids, and I pinned them back, and I put the, the uh, chopsticks in them. And you know, I was like, that is so nice. But I'm always like, always be original. You know, find what works for you because um, – I'm a little quirky in my dress, and so Rabu's wife, Sherry, my best friend, like, I would never wear that. I will wear um, animal print with army print because I'm just that confident, and I know what works for me. But I always tell people, if I'm working for you or if I'm styling you, I'm going to meet where you are. Um, one of my cousins was like, I can never do um, stripes and polka dots. I'm like, but you can. I said, but you don't start bold. You start where you can, so maybe you do vertical stripes and horizontal stripes. You don't jump mm -hmm. out you know what I mean? Now, ladies, I got to jump in. I got to jump okay. in for a second, okay? <laughs> I can't add to it, <laughs> but I got to go to commercial break, okay? okay. I at least got to show two commercials, so I'm going to have to refund some of my sponsors. So we're going to go, go to commercial break. This has been a great – I know there's some folks, and if you're watching this at home, mom, dad, what have you, because there's always different perspective. You know, a person not a hero in their own backyard. If you have some young ladies or young men – they need to hear this. Have them go watch this episode. We're going to go to commercial and we'll be right back. This is a good one, y'all. The global market is waiting for a fundamentally new transport and infrastructure technology that is safer, faster, highly efficient, and very eco-friendly. With all-terrain functionality, Skyway is the future of transportation being built today. Skyway believes transport should be a solution, not the source of our problems. Become a co-owner of Skyway and join the effort to build Skyway, save the planet. We invite you to learn more at buildskyway.com. Dorothy Denise, the pastor, the prophet, the teacher, the author, the entrepreneur, has written an amazing book called The Hidden Affair, the story of a former first lady determined to shatter the silence. Get your copy today at dorothydenise.com. Fed up with the rising costs of cable and satellite? Cut the cord and start watching the channels you want at a fraction of the cost. With IXQ TV, stream thousands of entertainment, sports, news, and movie networks, plus local channels on your TV or mobile device. For as low as $39 a month, enjoy all the benefits of cable and satellite with no credit checks, contracts, or installation fees. Say goodbye to high cable bills forever. Visit StreamingSaves.com today. Overcome diabetes. Stop making excuses. Resist the hype. Save your life by Marion Hayes. Get your copy today at Amazon.com and overcome diabetes. 
First impressions can be the difference between gaining loyal customers or losing them forever to your competition. At PrintFrenzy.com, we provide endless possibilities to make great first and lasting impressions. From business cards and banners to design services and website development, Print Frenzy has the high-quality products you need at the lowest prices you'll find. Re-energize your business with a fresh, professional look. Or print your current designs with us and save. Visit PrintFrenzy.com today. Hello, I was looking for a good cleaning service. Can I ask you a couple of questions? Can you clean my garage? Can you steam my carpets? Can you work really fast? Do you provide your own cleaning supplies? Can you work around my schedule? Do you screen your workers? Can you clean my business too? Okay, I don't need my husband anymore. Today's episode of Real Talk with Rob Gary is brought to you by Glam Haven The Movement. Glam Haven is known for its incredible down-to-earth environment. Run by Euphrates Robeson, the corrective hairstyling specialist. Now, Euphrates' designs have been featured on the BET Awards. She sat on women's panels, but more importantly, she's been highly recognized for her service in her neighborhood. Euphrates is highly known for her wonderful makeovers, as you can see here. And she's also known for her versatility. So if you're looking for an incredible place to great environment to have your hair done, reach out to Glam Haven The Movement. They can be reached at 973-375-5855. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with our guests. I'm going to go ahead and unmute them. They've been just having a grand time while we're on commercial. But uh, ladies, we are back. How y'all doing over there? Great. Great. We are great. This, this is a good show. I'm looking at, during commercial, I'm doing some engineering here. So I'm looking at comments on YouTube, looking at comments on Facebook, doing, just working during commercial. But this, is, this has been a great, great, great show. You know, it's interesting. Some, this, this show is... Well, we're about to hit some other topics, so it's not over yet, so I'll get my opinion later on. So the next thing we're going to go into, we're going to go back to Tamika. Tamika, you talked about, you know, thank God, you know, that you were able to overcome having a stroke, you know, because your everything happens for a reason, and your trials or tribulations or your blessings are going to help so many other people, someone like myself, because I want to be here until I'm 200 years old, so I'm going to be here for a long time. So someone like myself are going to be able to stick around longer by doing the right things and doing them for right reasons. So, Tamika, I'm going to go out to you. I know your topic was about, um, you know, in detail about stroke. So can, can you give us a little bit about your topic and give us some detail on it? Absolutely. You know, at, I was 27 years old, and I was married. Uh, we had, I had just had my last child, the third child. And so during that pregnancy, I developed hypertension high blood pressure. And my OB doctor kept saying to me at 27, as soon as you have the baby, it's going to go away. It's just, it's just something that a lot of women get. It's called preeclampsia, but it's high blood pressure during pregnancy. I've never had it before, but I thought in my mind, mostly everyone in my family I know has this. So it's probably not a big deal. And I never took it serious. So during that whole pregnancy, I continued to work. I owned a, a bakery at that time, and I just got out of the military. And um, I really felt like this was going to go away. I believed her. I had my daughter, and my blood pressure was so high in the hospital after the delivery, I had to stay longer. And that should have been a clue to me that this is a, prob a real problem. But at 27, there was nothing in my mind that I'd ever learned, that I ever heard. It would make me think I was at risk for a stroke. Nothing. That was the farthest thing from my mind. And so I stayed extra in the hospital. Ten days after having her, I woke up with this massive headache. I mean, the type of headache that I could equate to an elephant sitting on my head headache. 
and my husband went to work. My mom was at our home because I just had the baby, so she was visiting from Philly, where I'm from. And she kept saying, you need to take something. You need to take something. So, you know, moms always have, like, the good drugs. <laughs> and so <laughs> I took some medicine from her, and it did nothing. It was like I had never taken anything. It, the pain actually got worse. And so about lunchtime, my mom said, you can't, you can't keep doing this. She's taking care of the baby while I'm in my bed crying from this headache. My eyes were bloodshot red. And she said, we got to go to an emergency room. So I drive my mother, who cannot drive, and my newborn baby and myself to a patient first. And we're pulling up. And my mother says, what is this? Is this, this is not a hospital. I said, this is urgent care. She said, why'd you come here? I said, there's no way I'm taking my baby into a hospital, an emergency room. Like, in my mind, I'm thinking that's the that's the last place I want to take a baby to. So I go to the patient first, and this was 16, this was 17 years ago. They had no diagnostic equipment in patient first at that time. So my blood pressure was so high, they called the OB doctor. And she said, Well, she developed this during pregnancy and she has a history of migraines. Uh, so give her something for the pain and send her home. I, I don't even remember the numbers, but they were like astronomical. And um, I leave there in tears. My mother's, you know, making a fuss about what kind of um, doctors are you? She's in more pain now. You did nothing. And um, I leave. I'm like, I'm just not going to deal with this. So I drive myself back home all along having a stroke and didn't even know. We get back home, and I'm like, I, I really can't see. My vision at this point is starting to diminish. So you go from having all of this outside vision to maybe like a tunnel, and all I could see was this, everything that was there directly in front of me. My husband comes home from work, and he's like, is this the same headache you had this morning? I said, yes. He's like, let's go. So he takes me to the emergency room, and as we're driving, I'm feeling really weird. My mouth has shifted. One side of my face had totally dropped. I, I couldn't even lift up my cheek if I wanted to. It was as if half of my face I had no control of. We're walking into the emergency room doors, and I had this overwhelming feeling. Like, you guys know, like mother's intuition. It was this feeling that I'm not going to make it, that this is it for me. And I remember as soon as we walked in the, the ER doors, like the doors opened up, I turned to my husband and I said, just promised me that you're going to take care of the kids. And he's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And I don't remember anything after that. He told me later that I peed on myself. You know, they rushed me straight into the back, did a CAT scan and said, I had a bleed on the right side of my brain. When I woke up three days later, I was 27 years old and had no control of the entire left side of my body, had no control when I had to go to the bathroom. My speech was completely slurred. Um, it was actually embarrassing to talk because none of my words sounded like my words. I would think of sentences that I wanted to say and it was not coming out of my mouth. I remember um, the nurses would have to feed me and I was like, I refuse to have you bathe me. Like it was just so, oh, life changing for me at that time. There's nothing I can compare that to. I thought in my mind, how is this happening to me at this age? I'm a healthy person. I'm a little overweight. And I, and I kept saying, this doesn't make sense. But when I thought about it, I was overweight. I had extremely high blood pressure. And I was under an, uh, a whole lot of stress with my business, with being a mom, trying to juggle those two things. You know, there were a lot of indicators, a lot of factors that I should have been aware would cause this or could cause this. It took months and months of physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy for me to get back to this point that I really, in my mind, refused anything else. You know, the doctors told me you will never walk again. You will never have... Um, you will never be able to be on your own. You will always need assistance. And I will always rebuke those things. I, I remember looking at a neurosurgeon and his team who told me that, you know, this is it for you. Your life is going to be drastically different. And I said that the devil is a liar. Like I rebuke that. And every time I would say, that's not my future. That's not the future I see for myself. They would send psychiatrists 
and psychologists into my room because they thought I was crazy. They told me that I was in denial about what my future was going to be. And so I am an advocate, an advocate for heart disease and stroke because I'm telling you, the doctors told me I would not be at this point, but I knew in my mind that I would be at this point. I know the God I serve and I know the work that I was willing to put into it. Yeah. And so everything that I talk about, even with the book, Change Your Mind, Change Your Waistline, it's all here. We control everything. And I mean everything yeah. around us. Right. And so, that, yes, that's it. That's it. Wow. That's wow. 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 This, this is amazing. Again, this is a good show because I know there are a lot of people right now, especially in my world, you know, even though we're entrepreneurs and we don't have to punch a clock and, and that's admirable for those who do it. Um, but heck, heck, I'm stressed like a dart. I just told my mother the other day, we were coming from an 87 year old birthday and I said, you know, sometimes I just feel 1000% overwhelmed, you know, running multiple businesses, you know, being a helpmate to folks, being a husband, being a dad, being a coach, you know, and then being out of shape. None of that's good. Right, right, right. None, none of that's good. None of that adds up to, to be good. So that's why I'm on this journey now. And today we worked out and tomorrow we'll be working out. And I'm not taking a day off. You know, it is what it is. And this is amazing. So th th this is confirmation. And for nobody else, I didn't even know what your topic was going to be about until you put in the, uh, until you put in the <laughs> message. In. So for nobody else, this show was for me. Yeah. And for that, I thank you. Wow, wow. So, so. We're crunching on time, so we're just gonna to go to Myra's topic, and then we do have a chance to circle back around, so we can, so, so, so those could, so you guys could comment on Myra's and/or Tamika's topic. You know, Tammy, we will, but let's go up, up to Myra's topic. So, Myra, I know you're a cancer survivor, stage four. They told you to go home and spend the rest of your time with your family 16 years ago, and it's interesting. 16 for you, 16, 17 for Tamika, but thank God both of y'all are here today, and so the floor is all yours. <laughs> <laughs> and I and and, and uh, Rappo, you know, I, like Tamika, I was told um, also that um, what I should be thinking. It, it's so critical to not not you have to be your own advocate. You do. Um, you have to when a doctor is saying things to you, you have you know inside of your own body. You know how you feel. 95% when the doctor gave me that diagnosis, he said, you need to go be with your family. The first thing I thought was, the devil's alive. No, I'm not, yep. not going to do that. I'm going to spend more time. I'm going to see my grandkids. I have four kids and six grandkids right now. Three of them was born between the time I got diagnosed and that. I knew I was going to be here to see those kids. Right. So I had a purpose. You have a purpose. You you have to you have to want to live. Yes. You have to want to live more than anything. You have to feel that that you want to live. That you have things to live for. That you can offer uh, something to somebody else. I had a conversation with a young lady today, Rob. I believe she's on our team, and I saw a remark that she made on on Facebook about how she you know doctors are telling her this and that and, and she was just feeling bad 27 years old she doesn't know what to do i immediately said to her dear me because i you know a lot of, i have to make sure that the person wants to talk to me right right it's one thing when you when you are speaking to someone that that is coming from the same place you're you're you've been there right you know about a person that has gotten diagnosed will talk to me quickly right because i've been there i understand what they've been through what they're going through so i can talk to them and they'll talk to you same thing with to people that have strokes are going to talk to her quickly Definitely. so i explore her her language and I said, DM me. She DM me. And we started talking. I said, listen, just call me. Here's my number. Call me. She called me. And I talked to this young lady, 27 years old. Had no idea what they were doing to her. They wow. just experimented. She had wow. no idea what they're doing to her. And 27 years old, I talked to her for about an hour. When I got finished.
finished talking to her, she said, I'm going to call these people mm. and I'm going to let them know what I want. Right. See, you have to be your own advocate and you have to say, hey, listen, this is what I want. Right. What I want to do. This is what I'm saying. So you, if you can't get an answer from one doctor, then you move to the next doctor. Right. Go somewhere yeah. else. You have insurance? Go somewhere else. A lot of women don't uh, don't know that when you have breast cancer, when you uh, get your breasts removed, mm -hmm. you have a right to go to any doctor as many as times as you want until you are satisfied right. with how you are looking, with how you are feeling. Right. It is a law. People don't know it. Mm. No, they're afraid of of these things that the doctors tell them. They're afraid. Chemo, I'm not against chemo. I, I really stress this to people. Right. People are bad mouthing chemotherapy. When you have fourth stage cancer, I'm going to tell you, go get some chemo. I've done it many times. You are in the last stage of right. cancer. You right. need chemotherapy. Chemotherapy just does its job a little bit right. more than it needs to. So what did I do? I took chemo for years. I lost my hair two times. But guess what? I got so educated in, in researching, okay, people dying from not, not even the cancer but the chemo. So what is it that's happening to me? It's breaking my body down so bad that I couldn't get it the next week for it to keep working. So I said, I got to be smart. I'm going to go over to the health food store and praise God that the lady in the in the, in the uh, uh, health food store was very educated mm -hmm. on her products in that store. She just didn't have the store. She's my best friend, one of my best friends right now. Mm -hmm. And she started educating me on different products. And she would say, don't tell your doctor. <laughs> He's going to tell you don't take it. Because and I started, put, the business. I started right. putting it together. I started putting it together. Wait a minute. Something's going on here. She's telling me this. He's telling me this. And then I go to him and I say, not my doctor. I go to my doctor and I say, hey, listen. I say, look at this. And I hold it up and I'm like, I, I'm going to take this. It's going to help me get my white cell count back up. So when I come in here next week, I can take chemotherapy again. He said to me, don't take that. I said, oh, oh boy, something's going on here. And so I started to look. I started to look. Wait a minute. This is about money. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is about money. Yes. I, I, I have to live, but this is about money. So I started listening to her and I would listen to them. And I would tell him, okay, I would come home and I would hold it up. And I would say, all right, God, I need you to talk to me. Do I take this? And I would hear him, take it. I would take it. I would go back to get chemo the next week. And when I walked in, they would say, oh my God, your, your counts are beautiful. And wow. you know what I would say? I would say, mm-hmm. <laughs> because they're not going together. They're not going right. to go together. So that's what I mean when I say you got to step out and you got to be your own advocate and you got to go to doctors and say, hey, listen, this is what I need. I didn't know that I had that type of power. Right. I didn't know I could do it and right. until I started to do it. No, I'm not doing that. I'm doing this. No, I'm not taking chemo now. I need to go and get this fixed or that fixed. No, I need to go to the dentist. Dentist and chemo. Don't mix. I don't care where you go. If somebody, if a dentist tell you to work, he's going to work on your teeth and you say, I'm taking chemo. And he says, oh, I still can do it. Run. <laughs> oh, wow. I never because heard that. That, I that is about money. Chemo wow. and dentists don't mix under any circumstances. Wow. Everybody I know that has done it is not on this earth anymore. Wow. Mm. You don't. Do and why is so, Myra? What's the. It is because when they're working on your teeth, you are, infection is going in, it can infect yes. your body. It's going, your gums are powerful. Right. Your, your brain. They're, they're taking out your teeth. It 
the infection or whatever is coming out of those gums go into your system. Blood system. Yeah. So it, it is it is not something that you do. And a good dentist will tell you, I can't work on your teeth right now. I can't do right. it. I, I need you to come off of chemotherapy. And you need to be off of chemo for a couple of months before they touch. Wow. That, I mean, those are the types of things that I learned. I changed my diet. Yeah, I quit a job that was paying me right. well because it was stressing. It yeah. was stressing. Every time I went back, I got cancer somewhere again. Wow. Well, I understood, okay, all right, God, I know I said I wanted to get out of this job, but I get it now. I'm out. So mm -hmm. out of the job. You have to you have to know that your body there's endorphins that you're producing. Yes. You're producing this. You cannot eat sugar. I've had people say to me, I Myra, I love my sugar. I say, Okay, that's your choice. That's your choice. Well, guess what? They are no longer here because you cannot. You cannot keep whatever got you to that point, you can't stay. Right. You can't stay there spiritually. You have to you have to go where you, maybe you've never been spiritually before. Right. I don't it's know like, what you call it. Of a big, a big yes. leader to cancer. Like yes. if you go holistic, they'll be like, you holding on to something? <laughs> yeah. That's the, first, that's the first question. That's the first question. You got to wow. meditate. You got to get in your own space and you got to meditate. You got to tell your family. When I got diagnosed, my, my sisters and my mom and everybody came running in my house crying. I said, get out. Yeah. Huh. That energy. That yeah, energy. Yeah. Yeah. And they all turned back around. I said, now, when you come back in here, I want y'all to be laughing, smiling, and yeah. we don't come. Mm -hmm. No. I know. That's right. The top deciding factor, I didn't want that energy around me. I had to party with, with my good, good friends, and I made everybody wear a scarf because I was bald-headed. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody came in my house with a designer scarf. So I, I had a wall full of designer scarf. Oh, that's and awesome. Your energy awesome. matters. It uh -huh. matters. It matters. Everything that you do when you get diagnosed with any type of illness. I always tell people, you're 95% the brain, and then the rest of it is all up to you. It's all up to you. You don't have to listen. A doctor told me, say, listen, look at your liver. He threw a, a, a you know, the x-ray up in the x-ray. He said, this is your liver. This is the cancer right here. He threw it up. I said, oh, no, it's not. He said, yes, it is, Miss Burroughs. I said, no, it's not. He said, Miss Burroughs, I'm showing you your liver. <laughs> My liver is healthy, happy, whole, blessed. I went around his room saying all that. He just looked at me like I was fine, I'm sure. So people, you, you have to be an advocate for yourself, and you have to move in what you know. You God will let you know. He will let you know. Believe mm. him. Receive it. Receive your healing. Receive it. That's amazing. This, it is amazing. This and the is one amazing. thing that, you know, I I hear that connects us with my stroke and your cancer is that belief and also making changes. And how many times do people go through situations where they just accept whatever the doctor says okay. and, and then die because uh, they make no changes, yes, put right. no work, they make no effort. And we need the belief, and then we need to get busy. And so many don't. Tamika, can I can I change change one thing on you said my stroke and my cancer? Okay. No secret. Never call it my. Say the. Because okay. if you say my, you are making it yours. Okay. It belongs to you. Anything that I say mine to, it is mine. Well, I okay. never ever, I always say the cancer. Okay. Well, that makes true. a lot of sense. Because right. you don't want to ever, ever possess those illnesses. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and just to feed off of what both of you ladies said, um, so at Rutgers North, they started doing, and Rutgers North has something called the, the North Yoga Movement, and they go into the public schools, and they teach the kids yoga. And I took yoga last year, and I, to just attest, to what both of you said, the mind is so powerful. So I would go to the yoga class, and she'd be like, now we're going to center. And we center, and she'd be like, now push all with your ear through your back. And you could really feel, I'm like, oh, this mind thing is serious. <laughs> like, if you say do it, it doesn't. Yeah. So I'm right there with you, Tamika, right there with my, whatever you put 
with your mind too, but this is what I always tell people. You want things, everybody wants something. Everybody wants success. Nobody wants to put the work in. It doesn't, doesn't magically appear. You have to have hustle. And even with your health, you want to be skinny. I'm not against surgery. If, that, if that's what you can, you can, absolutely cannot. But put the work in. Put the fork down. You will, you'll cherish it more. Uh, Tamika, you'll cherish it more. Myra, you cherish because you put the work in. And now right. that you possess. And you can speak life into the next situation because you put the work in. But what can I tell you if I did something magically or if I got into a quick way? You right. have to put the work in. I tell people all of my people want change. Put that work in. <laughs> now, ladies, ladies, I gotta jump in again. I'm loving the show. Okay, I can't wait to watch the replay. Well, I'm I'm gonna come back and and I uh, to my viewers tonight. I think they're loving the show. We typically my alarm went off at nine o'clock and I was like bump the alarm. But what I have to do, I have to give away a trip. Um, I always okay. give away a five day four night trip to the Caribbean on every show. And check this out, ladies. Make sure you get your viewers. To go watch episode 13, because you ladies are episode 13, and all they have to do is just put a comment, because they follow me on YouTube and put a comment, and their name is going to go in the hopper, and so the folks at home will be able to see this, you guys won't be able to see this, but I'm going to pull this up right now, and and, and uh, let me pull it up, I got to give something away here, all right, and again, it's on the same screen that you guys are on, but I just have to move you guys to the side and go full screen real quick, and then we have to go to YouTube. And we're going to pull last week's episode off of YouTube. And my viewers at home, they see me on this computer now. Hey, guys, when you're engineering the talk show, you're on this computer, you're on that computer, you're on the computer. Okay. So I'm, we're going to go to YouTube. I, I, one day, uh, the producers will help me hire somebody to come work this with me. Okay. Real talk uh, with uh, Rob and Gary. Okay. There it is. So we're going to pull up ex episode number 12. Uh, where is it? Episode number 12. Bingo. When we click on it. All we do is grab the URL, make sure it's muted, uh, let's grab this URL. Everybody's watching this at home too, which is pretty cool. Okay, we copied the URL, now we're going to go back to what's called the random picker. We're going to click YouTube tools, YouTube random comment picker. We're going to place this URL here, and paste it, edit and paste. I am loving this show. I can't wait to watch the replay with Sherry. <laughs> Get the YouTube comments. Okay, is it did that? Ah, didn't that many people comment last week? A lot of people watched but didn't comment. So let's start. It's free to comment, guys. And I meant to go on the comment class. And the winner is I am the vision. Now I don't know who I am the vision is, but whoever I am the vision is, you need to reach out to me. Find me on Facebook. Inbox me. I want you to get your trip. Five day, four nights to the Caribbean. For two, and it's transferable, okay? I'm paying for it. Five Diamond Resort, it's transferable. If you don't want to go, you can give it away or you can sell it. It's valued at $2,000. And I want to say this, and I'll bring the ladies back on and we'll close out. Uh, for those who are looking to advertise their business. So we're done with the month of April. We already have some sponsors for May. If you want your commercial on Real Talk with Rob Bulgarian, and, and May is going to be a knockout. We're going to have a knockout lineup. We're going to just, we ended April with a boom. Ladies, this has been amazing. But we're going to have a knockout lineup. And so if you want to advertise your commercial, inbox me on Facebook or go to realtalkwithrabugary.com. You can advertise your commercial. If you don't have a commercial, you can buy a commercial, okay? We even produce commercials, all right? Or if you want us to put a 15-second promo about your product or your services, we this week we have a couple more slots for May. Right now we have three. Okay, we only could do about six a show, so maybe only three more, and that'll lock you in for the whole month of May, and you will get viewership. And so, I just had to do my little promo things there. And then lastly, Tammy, I want to reach out to you about this also because you're in the school. For all, I now have a connection with it, and this is important for mom and dad who are watching at home or anybody. I have a connection now for those who are looking to be entrepreneurial. Okay, I have a group of seven figure earners who are giving back and now working with. They're all in different companies, different walks of life. So for those out there right now, if you're looking to connect yourself with a seven-figure earner, that means someone who's documented made seven, made, made at least seven, made at least a million dollars, okay, in a two-year span. It can't be over 90 years. In a two-year span, they're looking to lock arms or work with you. So go to rabufriends.com, rabufriends.com, where you can learn about that as well. And so 
Ladies, this has been an amazing show. Yeah, we went over a little bit tonight, but uh, it, it's right. been it's been astronomical, and I am so blessed and so happy. And again, the, the, these this show spoke to a lot of folks tonight. A if lot of I folks. could, if I could end with just giving my tips, I, I don't I don't like to speak and leave people hanging. Yes. But I always want to give them some some tangible advice of. What and then also, done. ladies, how can people? So as you give your tips. Let them know how people can find you. And ladies and gentlemen who are watching at home, if you're watching on YouTube, they're going to type their comments to YouTube. So you can find their links. You can find everything. And on Facebook, they're going to type their comments there also where you can find them because I know many of you will be reaching out. Go ahead, Tamika. The first thing I want to say is water. We don't drink enough water. Good, Great job. Great, great job. <laughs> um, most people drink nowhere near the amount of water. That affects everything in your body from your heart to your liver, your kidneys, everything, your skin, your hair. Yeah. And we do all these external things for our body, but we can we can cure ourselves internally. So yeah. where's, a, where's a good start? Do more than what you've been doing. So if, if you're a person who doesn't drink any water, let's start with one bottle of water and keep bumping it up. The goal is to get to whatever your body weight is, you drink half of that in ounces every day. So if you weigh 100 pounds, your goal is 50 ounces of water every day. That keeps your body at its optimal performance level. It's almost like driving a car that has no oil and you expect that car to last forever. It's going to break down. The engine is going to blow out. You're going to have medical issues. So water is a, a big start. What we did in our household to change our eating habits, some of the things we reduce portion sizes. And so your mind doesn't make any difference what size plate you're eating on as long as it's full you feel content you feel that you're getting everything that has been cooked so i threw our plates in the trash i mean completely in the trash uh -huh. and we started to use saucers and my family was like going bananas what is this where's the plates we're going to use saucers and so after a, a while they didn't uh -huh. even notice there was a difference it was nothing for them to grab a saucer and and have breakfast nothing for them to grab a saucer and have dinner and so mentally you're still getting everything physically you are reducing your calorie intake wow. and so it's a mental thing we got to remember um we implemented a 15 minute rule in my home so my friends would come over and they say why do your kids keep calling out times they'd be like it's 6 20. <laughs> it's 6 it's 6 45 and they'd be like what are they doing I'm like, they're letting me know what time they finish their first plate because there will be no seconds until at least 15 minutes have passed. And where, where's the 15 minutes come from? What's that? There is a 15 minute gap from the time your stomach gets full and your brain gets the message. Your wow. brain doesn't know that you're full. You will continue to eat. Have you ever had a meal and then you just ate, 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 kept eating until your stomach started hurting? You're like, oh, I got to unbutton my pants. I, I feel so bad. Why did I do that? Because your brain didn't know you were full 20 minutes ago. Wow. Mm. So that 15-minute 15, 15 rule is huge. It's huge. And all these tips, they're in my book. <laughs> change your mind. Change your waistline. <laughs> I, you know, I held nothing back. I put everything that I did personally and that I know works. There's an app online that's free. It's a water app. It will remind you to yeah. keep drinking water all day. Oh, you know what I'm saying? We don't yeah. have to be in this game alone. There, there's so right. many tools that you right. can use. And yep. so I, I just wanted to leave you with those few. But there's actually 15 tips in the book. Um, is detailed information. It's so much about our journey. And then a journal in the back to hold you accountable for 21 days. I mean, it's amazing. And I'm not saying that just because I wrote it. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Myra, Tammy, any closing remarks? We're way over, so I'm not even worried about okay. that. I, so. I, I would just, I'll just go, um, I'll just expand on uh, what Tamika said. So your diet is so important. Please, please, people, Let's be proactive instead of reactive. Yes. When something, when you feel a lump in your breast, ladies, please stop sitting back guessing. Oh, do I go? I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to sit down and you're not going to, you're going to keep being afraid, guess what? You are dying while you are yeah. sitting there. Right. So 
be afraid not to find out because the longer you wait, the more the the, the more trouble you're going to be in. It's that cancer starts going, it's going to continue to go. Don't be reactive to it. Then start with your diet. Like Tamika said, drink water. It's important. But then I fast every yeah. single day. Good. Me too. Every day. I fast. 14, I don't 14 eat, hours. I don't eat my meal. I don't ha I have one meal a day. Wow. Now, one meal is eaten between four and seven. Amazing. Four and eight if I'm hanging out. I'm telling you, my body is so used to it wow. that it doesn't even bother me anymore. Food is not controlling me. Right. I am controlling it. Okay. And that is the bottom line. I don't have sugar. I have six grandkids, so of course, once in a while, I got to taste a piece of cake. <laughs> when you, when people in the family know your situation, my grandkids don't go cut me off a big piece of cake and come and give it to me. They will give me a small amount and say, we know, Grandma, you got to <laughs> live. So people start respecting. You can raise up your kids to, to do this. And one more thing, people, you got to go to the bathroom. If you're going to eat yeah. three meals a day, for God's sake, if the meals are sitting in your tummy and then you pooping once in every three days, or you're, 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 it, you, yeah. it's fermenting. It's sitting in your system. Your food is poisoning you. Yeah. It is not working for you. It is not making you stronger. It is not giving you any kind of nourishment. It's killing you. Yeah. You have to go to the bathroom. Food in, poop out. Right. <laughs> right. Wow, so, wow. That's, that's, I, I just wanted to give you that. Uh, that and chill out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Chill so, right, right. We used to say this, this, I'm telling my age a little bit, chillax. Chillax. <laughs> right. Because I'm telling you, whatever is going to happen, people going to die. People are going to stop be being your friends. Mm -hmm. People are going to be with you. People are not. If you're going to have money, you ain't going to have money. Like, right. oh, your life is going to happen. Right. Why are you stressing your life? You don't have to. Right. And get around some good people, people that inspire you, people that make you feel good. It's your life. This is all you get. You want to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, to finish that off, yes, right, Mambu, I know it's your talk show, but let me finish No, 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 no. It was my talk show. <laughs> <laughs> On my blog, I talked about, so when I started my blog last March, I started from the bottom. And the bottom was, I always say this, you don't want to be the best dressed corpse. Because if you don't, you mm -hmm. feel good, you look good. I, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I mean, we all can attest to this. You can dress up, but if you don't feel good, you just... Yes, you know, right? So I talk about um, uh, uh, the weight loss. I talk about when I was doing yoga. I talk about all that kind of stuff. And I talk about having positive attitudes. And then some of the last blog that I wrote was about coming out of your comfort zone and sometimes doing things that are not normal. You have to do things different if you want different things, right? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. Um, I think that health is wealth. My mom is big, big on health. She's 76 and she looks like she's probably, Rabu will tell you, 65. She does not eat meat. She eats between certain hours of a day. She's a minister, so she definitely is big on fasting. So we have to get back to those good things that, you know, we, we started doing when we were younger or people talk. They didn't do that. And then this is the real deal. Chicken and beef wasn't the same stuff it was. They're yeah. injecting these chickens. And I can tell you this. We do the Daniel Fast at church at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. I stopped eating meat for the Daniel Fast. This was about two years ago. My hair growth on my hair face was different because they shoot these chickens up with all these hormones. And if you're eating it, you are what you eat. Now you eat the the two-day chicken who was a chicken yesterday and a whole full chicken by the end of the week. Now right. you're eating this. So that's very important. But like I said, um, when it comes to um, uh, uh, your, your your appearance, um, if you look good, you if you feel good, you look good. So yeah. that it's from the inner and out, and it comes from attitude, it comes from mindset, it comes from spirituality. So all that stuff plays a part on you looking nice. And I always tell women, you know, it's not just about the outfit; it's about what you possess. And if you're radiant on the inside, it 
it shows on the outside. Yeah. All the all the clothes is the ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> so Absolutely. You can feel horrible and look nice, but you know what you feel like, right? So yeah. I, that's all I have to say about this. And oh, so you can find me on blessedwiththedime.com on my um, on my blog. Um, I, I am on Facebook under Tammy L. Pitt, my name, and I am on Instagram at blessed with the dime. I'm blessed with underscore dime. And I do, at my personal Instagram page, I always say if you have the audience um, and the opportunity to minister or to give to people, try to give them positivity. So on my personal Instagram page, I'm always writing things that are throw I mean, I post things that are thought provoking, that are spiritual, things that kind of humble you or keep you. And I always tell people yes. stay woke and stay humble because yes. that's what on your best day. There's someone doing better than you. There's somebody who looks better than you. <laughs> so you're never all of that, right? So just stay humble. You know, stay humble. And you thank God for all those little things. Um, because if we're not doing, um, you can be doing great. And if you have a, a plethora of people around you that are evil and mean, that means nothing. And here I'm going to take myself to the old, old school because I realized how much of a hip-hop head I was when I went to Robin's 40th birthday party. It ain't no fun if your homies can't have none. So yeah, no. nobody wants to get to the top and <laughs> only time. have people you don't know or people you don't yeah. love. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. so sharing is caring, help is wealth, and do all you can to give back and give to others. Because for me, gratification gives um, comes from giving to others. Yeah. yeah. And too. that's all I have. <laughs> well, ladies, ladies, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're thank welcome, you. Thank no, you. no. Thank you, Robbo. Tonight has thank been a great you. show. Um, hey, it's called Real Talk with Rob Gary for a reason. You know, who mm -hmm. says we're supposed to stop at 9 o'clock? Nobody. But um, I appreciate you guys. Um, it's been an amazing show. I know this will probably be one of our most watched shows. If you're out there tonight and you watch this show, there's someone who needs to see this show. Like the other ones, they need to see this one. So again, Myra, Tammy, Tamika, do me a favor. Go to Real Talk with Rabu Gary, okay? Make sure you put your information there. Every guest speaker who's done it, someone has reached out to them for some shape, form, or fashion. I haven't picked up Todd Cahill book yet because I was supposed to get it, but I got busy. But I'm picking up Todd Cahill book tonight. And Tamika, I'll be picking up your book tonight. So I need to know. I need, I need you to put that link. I need you to put that link so I can go get that book because I'm buying it tonight. And so, ladies, and then go on YouTube. Make sure you comment there. And for all of your followers who are watching, they, I'm sending people away on trips, so let them know, hey, go watch me. I was on the show. Subscribe to YouTube because everybody's not on Facebook, especially our millennials. Subscribe to YouTube. Go watch the show. Put a comment. Your name goes in the drawer. And plus, they need to hear from you guys. And so thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Problem. It's been a pleasure. I got to sign off. Ladies, y'all hold on for a second. Everybody at home, hey, we love you. Look forward to seeing you next week. And I'm just going to give you a little sneak peek of one of my guests next week because a lot of folks know him. And it took me a long time to get him, but it's a good friend of mine named David M. Onitie. Some of you don't know the name. Oh, Some of you do. Yeah. It's going, he's in Africa right now. He'll be home tonight. He'll be, my, he'll be one of my guests for next week. Uh, we have two other guests, but, you know, I just want to mention him in advance because he could blow out the lines. All right, we might not have any more lines for folks. That's how it happens sometimes. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tonight. Ladies, thank you. It's been thank a pleasure. God bless everybody at home. Talk to y'all later. See y'all next week, 8 p.m. Bye-bye.